Thank you, Ren, for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. Today we are going to dive into the marvelous ecosystems of Planet 4546b, the stage for the survival and exploration video game Subnautica. After exploring these exciting yet sometimes really terrifying ecosystems myself, my biologist brain could not stop but find some fundamental ecological differences between some of these ecosystems and marine ecosystems here on Earth. Today we will be discussing some of these interesting differences. But before that, I want to talk about the fact that planet Earth, while not facing the Kara bacteria, is facing another crisis, one of the climate variety. One that today's sponsor, Ren, is tackling. I always try to make decisions to live a more sustainable life, like saving electricity, buying secondhand, using public transportation, and saving water. But there are also other ways one can help, for example, by supporting projects fighting this crisis in the front lines. And REN is a great way to do that. REN is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and then offset it by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects. One thing I really like about REN is the type of projects they support. They support efficient projects that also benefit local communities and that can determine exactly how much carbon dioxide is offset. I also really appreciate that 10% of each monthly contribution goes towards climate policy groups like Carbon 180 and Clean Air Task Force. And as I've said before, climate policy and systemic change is ultimately what we need to fight this crisis. If you want to contribute to these projects and offset your carbon footprint, check out the link in my description below. The first 100 people who sign up using the link will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you, Ren, for the great work and for sponsoring today's video. Now off from Earth and back to 4546b. The first ecosystem we are presented with the moment we start our adventure is the Safe Shallows. This is one of my favorite ecosystems in 4546b, maybe because it was my first introduction to the world of Subnautica, but also because it reminds me of our coral reefs here on Earth. But there is one striking difference between the shallows on 4546b and coral reefs on Earth, and that's the lack of predators. Due to their access to light and calm waters, the shallows in 4546b host a diverse community of fauna and flora. But the fauna here seems to be composed almost solely by herbivores. Coral reefs and any other biodiverse ecosystems on Earth are home to a wide range of predators. Predators don't need to be big with big teeth, weird appendages, and have the face of a witch from Christmas past. Animals as small as crabs and snails can also be carnivores and take the place of predators in food webs. However, according to our PDA, the only non-herbivore animal in this ecosystem seems to be the boomerang fish, because it eats corals. And corals, despite being categorized as flora in our PDA, are actually animals, at least on Earth. Predators play a vital role in any ecosystem. They control the size of prey populations and eat the most vulnerable, leaving more food for the survival and success of healthy prey animals and slowing down the spread of disease. This makes the safe shallows extremely intriguing. They have a lot of herbivores, few predators, at least that we know of, and yet remain a balanced ecosystem. Perhaps their proximity to the creepvine forests that do have predators like the stalkers is enough to maintain this balance. But one can only speculate. More research is definitely needed here. With that said, let's move on to the creepvine forests, the clear counterparts to Earth's kelp forests. One very curious aspect of Planet 4546b is how you can find very different ecosystems just next to each other with very clear boundaries between them. So much so that some animals don't even seem to cross these boundaries. The stalkers are a good example of this. They live in the creepvine forests, but don't seem to venture to any of the surrounding areas, like the grassy plateaus, for example. Being the big predators that they are, it would be expected that at least occasionally some of them would swim to the surrounding environments, looking for other types of food and avoiding competition in the creepvine forests. However, that doesn't really seem to happen. It's even stranger when you consider that one can find them near the crash zone, where food seems quite scarce, and where a bigger predator exists. You can have different ecosystems on Earth just next to each other, usually when water masses with different properties converge. However, there is no evidence that there is a significant change in seawater properties from the creepvine forests to the grassy plateaus, at least temperature and visibility-wise so you would probably expect a more steady transition from one ecosystem to the other. Why we don't find stalkers in the mushroom forests or the grassy plateaus remains a mystery. 
The next ecosystem I want to talk about is one that took me a long time to find. And you know that if you've seen my gameplay. Yeah, I sucked. And that is the Jelly Shroom Cave, which has beautiful colors that I love. The Jelly Shroom Cave is a cave system found at depths between 180 and 300 meters. The most notable thing about these caves is, well, in their name, the Jelly Shrooms. And of course, their symbiotic association with the large crab snakes. But how does this ecosystem sustain itself? And how do these massive predators survive in these caves? These questions can be extended to most deep sea cave ecosystems on 4546b. These ecosystems have no light. In the ocean, algae produce energy from light that they can use to capture carbon. All life forms on Earth are made of carbon, as is life on 4546b, it seems. And in order to sustain this carbon-made body of ours, we need to constantly intake, well, carbon. We do it by eating other carbon-based life forms, like plants and animals. Food gives us the nutrients and energy we need to keep our bodies alive. Algae and plants, on the other hand, obtain their carbon not from other living beings, but from carbon dioxide, and get their energy from the sun. Unfortunately, animals cannot obtain carbon from non-living things, nor can we produce energy from sunlight. Unless you're this guy. So we need the greens to do that for us. Without light, there are no algae. Without algae, there are no algae-eating animals. And without algae-eating animals, there are no animal-eating animals, and so on. The Jelly Shroom Caves have no light to sustain algae. But neither does the deep sea. So how does life exist in these dark places? On Earth, life in the deep sea is mostly fueled by matter sinking from the surface of the ocean. Of course, unless there are microbes, like bacteria and archaea that substitute what plants and algae do at the surface, by being able to obtain energy from non-living things, other than the sun. This is what happens in hydrothermal vents, for example, which are oases for life in dark zones. Hydrothermal vents are home to chemoautotrophic organisms, which is jargon for microdudes that can eat stuff that comes from the inside of the Earth. These organisms are the base for food webs in hydrothermal vents. Many of them live in symbiosis with bigger animals, providing them with the nutrients they need to survive. Others are eaten by bigger organisms, that in turn are also eaten by bigger organisms, and so on, leading to a rich and diverse ecosystem. The Jelly Shroom Cave has no light to support algae. There is, however, volcanic activity on one side of the cave, which could potentially inject the entire area with minerals usable by microbes. But that still wouldn't explain how so many crab snakes sustain themselves without leaving these caves. Because they're big. And big organisms need a lot of food, which does not seem to exist in these caves. Cave systems on Earth are also home to a plethora of life forms, mostly sustained by sporadic inputs of food from the surface. This can happen via currents or droppings from cave visitors, like bats, for example. Because of rare access to food, cave dwellers have developed adaptations that allow them to survive a long time without it. Some of those adaptations are having small body sizes, reduction in the size of their eyes, or not having eyes, and having no coloration, because producing color pigments takes energy. I wouldn't consider the crab snake necessarily small. So where does all the food required to sustain so many of these large and active colorful predators come from? While there seem to be some fish venturing into these caves from the surface, there aren't that many. So what is sustaining life in these caves? This also goes for some of the deep sea biomes, like the blood kelp forests and the lava lakes. I don't think we have the answers for any of these questions yet, so can someone send a team of scientists down there, please? Before finishing this video and revealing my ultimate conclusion, I want to talk about the Lost River, which is also one of my favorite ecosystems on 4546b. I think it's because of its mix of exoteric ambiance and thrill. It also has this place, where I will one day buy a house. The Lost River is a foggy biome with the Brine River flowing through it. On Earth, brine pools are dense bodies of water with salinity three to eight times higher than the surrounding seawater. They can look kind of foggy and similar to the Lost River in 4546b. However, I have never heard of brine rivers on Earth. Only pools. So if anyone happens to find one of those here, please give me a call. Because they look awesome. The brine river has several areas with hydrothermal vents that could fuel microbial life. 
and it also has brine. Brine usually contains high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide and methane, which can also provide energy to certain microbes. These two sources of microbial energy could potentially explain the incredible biodiversity of this ecosystem. However, more research is needed. This leads me to the two key points that, in my opinion, would make the existence of some of these ecosystems unrealistic in a planet that follows the same biological principles as Earth. The first one is the predators to prey ratio. And the second one is the size of some of these predators and how active they are, considering how little access to food they have. Given the high volcanic activity in these areas, it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect an ecosystem to develop, even one with big animals. However, big animals need a lot of food. The jumbo squid, for example, migrates from deeper parts of the ocean to shallower ones in search for food. To maintain an ecosystem, you always need more biomass of prey than of predators. Otherwise, there is not enough food to sustain animals higher up in the food web in the long run. And while there are hydrothermal vents in 4546b that could sustain ecosystems, I can't help but notice the abnormal high number of active big predators for the number of smaller fish and other prey. Especially when considering competition between predators as well, ecosystems like the lava lake and the jelly shroom cave would likely not be sustainable, unless the animals within them would come out to hunt in richer areas. For example, the shallows, that in contrast have no predators. Otherwise, many of these ecosystems would probably not exist. Of course, this is all pure speculation, and we would need more research to determine the probability of a made-up underwater world in an alien planet with a similar atmosphere to Earth in a video game existing is. Putting this over-realistic analysis aside, I really enjoy this game, and I think these ecosystems are pretty incredibly done. I was impressed by the effort put into making these ecosystems as real as possible. They were beautiful and vibrant, they had believable symbiosis, the animals were awesome, they had bioluminescence, which, if you don't know, I love. And it did feel like I was exploring an ocean that could potentially exist. Kinda. Let me know if you liked this video down below, liked it if you liked it, share it just with someone you think will like it too. Thank you! to all my Patreons for making this channel possible. If you want to support me on Patreon, check the link down in the description. Thank you, Ren, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.